what's up guys it's lily with ammo.com and i picked a really controversial topic for today we're going to discuss nine millimeter versus 40 and we're going to see the ballistics the history a little bit more information and figure out which one actually is the better caliber so let's get started so this video is not designed to be a history lesson but i do think it's important that we note where the great divide kind of started or the great debate between nine millimeter and 40 caliber users so in 1986 in Miami, the FBI were involved in a shootout where a nine millimeter round failed, leaving catastrophic consequences. Now, after that incident, the FBI started developing their testing and standards to rank which calibers they felt qualified for self-defense purposes and pass certain standards. Now, during that time as well, a lot of engineers started to expand their research into calibers, try to maximize the ballistics. So there was a lot of advancements. It kind of sparked a little bit of a a revolution with the ammunition that we enjoy today and the improvements that were made. So as many of us already know, everyone and their mom has an opinion on whether nine millimeter is superior or if 40 caliber is superior. But at the end of the day, the science and the numbers don't lie. So for the next section, let's look at ballistics and see how these two calibers compare to one another. If there's stark differences, if there's overlap and really get an idea for the power, the functionality of each one. So one last thing I wanna mention before we jump into the ballistics is that there, with each caliber, there's varying types of ammunition. So you have range ammo, competition grade, you have hollow points, you have all sorts of stuff out there. So if you were trying to compare nine millimeter hollow points to 40 caliber range rounds or vice versa, the data that you're comparing against one another and, and competing with, it just wouldn't be fair. If you think of like sports that have divisions or categories, you're not gonna put someone on the very low level with a higher level. It's just not gonna give you the right data. It's not gonna be a fair assessment. So this is gonna be similar to that. We're gonna take just the general overview of each caliber and compare those to one another. So that way the comparison that we're seeing is realistic and comparable and not inflated to support one side over the other. So for ballistics, let's start by examining the numbers and the math that are gonna impact that caliber's performance. Um, and also its reliability for self-defense purposes. So, so let's start with caliber size. If you were to just take two pieces of ammunition, a nine and a 40, and have them in your hand, you're gonna clearly see that the 40 caliber is bigger. But if we're talking mathematics, the diameter of a nine millimeter is gonna be 0.35 inches. The 40 caliber is gonna be 0.4 inches. So that 40 caliber is going to be a larger projectile. Now let's talk about bullet weight. So on average, don't get crazy in the comments. I know there's other options other than this as well, but on average, you're gonna see for nine millimeter, 115 grain to 147 grain. For 40, you're gonna see 155 to 80. Now, if you already know what grain is or you watched some of the previous videos, grain is a unit of measurement. That is telling you how heavy that projectile is. Now, whether how heavy or how light it is is going to help impact the penetration, the punch that it's gonna pack when it reaches the target, it's also gonna affect the speed that that projectile is traveling. So that is really useful information. So what we just see here is that the 40 caliber is on average going to be a heavier projectile. And we'll go in a little bit later and talk about how these different uh, mathematical numbers are gonna impact the performance, but we've still got a little bit more to go. So if we're talking velocity, okay, feet per second, on average, you're looking at 1100 to 1300 for nine millimeter you're looking at 1,000 to 1,200 for 40. So because that nine millimeter is gonna be a lighter, smaller projectile, typically it's gonna be traveling a little bit faster. Now, if we're talking energy, muzzle velocity, for nine millimeter, we're looking at 300 to 400 foot pounds. For 40, we're looking at four to 500 foot pounds. So that muzzle velocity, that energy is going to impact the penetration, it's going to impact the punch that it packs when it gets there, the stopping power, as a lot of people refer to it as. So all of these numbers combined can tell us how that ammunition is gonna function, what we can expect out of it. All right, so now that we went over a lot of the, the average math for these two calibers, let's talk about how they function as far as penetration and their practicality for self-defense. And so going back to the FBI incident in 1986, Based on their research, they recommend that you choose a caliber for self-defense that has a minimum of 12 inch penetration. Now I wanna preface by saying that de depending on the type of ammunition that you're using, so if you're using hollow points, range rounds, uh, different grains, uh, 
different brands, you're going to experience different results. But on average, nine millimeters is going to have 12 to 18 inches of penetration. And you're looking at 40 as having 13 to 18 on average. Now, if you look, there is a huge overlap in that information. Again, you have to realize that it depends on the type of ammo you're using. For example, if you're using hollow points, you might have bigger expansion. It's going to maximize nine millimeters expansion and get that closer to 40. However, that is going to impact the depth of penetration. So there's always trade-offs with the qualities of the ammo, the purpose of the ammunition. So it's really important to get to know what all these numbers mean, what the terms mean, and how you can determine which type of ammo is correct for your application. So the next thing we're going to discuss is additional information you probably want to know in order to determine which caliber is right for you or make your own determination on which you think is better. Um, I would say they both have their benefits and they both have their deficits, but we need to discuss that so you can make the right choice. So the first thing we're going to talk about is recoil management. So more often than not, the 40 caliber is going to have a snappier, harsher recoil. Now, how does that impact you? If you're someone who's very comfortable managing recoil, that factor may not come into play when making your decision. But I would implore you to consider in a self-defense situation, you do want to have a manageable firearm that allows you to take multiple shots if necessary. And that, act that extra snap, that little bit of force is going to make it more difficult to be accurate. You are definitely going to need to focus on that when you're training. Um, so you might decide that it's not a factor that applies to you and you might find that that is something that you value, especially if you're trying to shoot faster. If you're trying to be more efficient in your drills, this might be something that comes into play that is impacting your progress. So another factor to consider is going to be cost of ammunition. So on average, you're going to see that nine millimeter is going to be 15 to $20 a box. Again, depending what kind, if you're talking about 40 caliber, you're looking at 17 to $23 a box. And by box, I mean 50 rounds. Um, so that is something where there's not a drastic difference, but when you're talking about training, when you're talking about uh, taking courses or just wanting to stock up on ammo, there is going to, that is going to add up over time. Another factor to note is going to be your choice or your selection of firearms options. So nine millimeter, because after especially all the advancements that were made in the nineties, that caliber is arguably the most popular caliber there is, especially on the pistol platform. So there are so many varieties when it comes to the firearms you can select. You can get nine millimeter rifles, handguns in full size, subcompact, compact, but it just, it doesn't end. Now I'm not saying that that type of variation doesn't exist with the 40, However, your options are going to be a bit more limited. So as far as versatility in your selection, nine millimeter is going to win that one. And another aspect to consider is going to be round count. On average, depending on the size of the firearm and the model, you're looking at nine millimeter having a little bit more capacity than a 40 caliber. Now, some people say that argument just doesn't really apply to them. They really don't care. Uh, which is fine, but some people might care. And this information is not to nitpick each one and side with one versus the other. It's just to provide you the differences, the similarities, and basically the essential knowledge to make your decision. Another thing I want to mention, and it's not super in line with ammunition, but the resale value or value retention of the firearms itself. So having worked in a firearm shop for many years, there's something that no one has been able to argue against me about, which is going to be that nine millimeter firearms are going to retain their value a lot better than 40 caliber. And why is that since 40 is still popular? Who knows? But if you had two clients come in with the same firearm that they wanted to trade in or sell to a shop, the person with the nine millimeter version is going to get significantly more than the person who is selling the 40. Obviously it also depends on condition as well. Um, and a couple other factors, but overall the common theme is that your 40 is not going to retain its value near as well as a nine millimeter. So one of the last things I want to mention is that law enforcement and a lot of the agencies have gone away from using 40 caliber, uh, with the insane advancements that have been made to the nine millimeter cartridge. Uh, they have done the testing and have determined that due to cost and ease of use, they would prefer to go with that route. Not saying there's not agencies that don't use other things like 40 or even 45. However, it's just on a mass scale. You have seen that there was an exodus from 40 over to nine in more recent years. Now, everything that we've covered today proves that both are reliable and practical for the self-defense application. All right. And that's it for today's video. I hope you found this information useful, whether it be for making a decision on whether you should go the route of nine millimeter or 40, 
or if you just needed some more details so you can argue with your firearms friends. But either way, it's fine with me. But regardless, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified when we upload our next videos. And please drop a comment below if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see, questions. And uh, with that, we'll see you next time.